I also want to thank the members of the worship committee for these beautiful flowers in our sanctuary this morning. Traditionally, on Mother's Day, when we're all in person, we have flowers for all of the women and mothers and mother figures in the congregation. So these are in honor of you. Will you pray with me? Oh Lord, thank you for already blessing us in this service. We are so lucky and blessed to have one another. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I want to read some headlines for you. Working moms are not okay. Pandemic will take our women 10 years back in the workplace. Pandemic triples anxiety and depression in new moms. The primal scream, America's mothers are in crisis, is anyone listening? Those are just a sampling of the articles that have been published in the last year about the state of mothers. It has been a hard year for everyone. We've all faced challenge and loss and grief in manifold ways. But journalism and research shows that mothers have carried a particular burden. One study showed that women accounted for 56% of job loss in the United States during this pandemic, largely related to the pressures of child and family care. Another said that as of last June, 76% of new mothers said they were experiencing moderate to high anxiety. That's compared to 29% before the pandemic. And even before COVID-19, mothers faced specific burdens and inequalities. For example, the continued social expectation that mothers are the ones who must keep a house and home, or the reality that working moms are often passed over for big jobs or for promotions, or the startling data around maternal health outcomes for Black women and women of color. Of course, most of us don't need research to tell us that mothers are doing a lot and that some mothers are struggling. If you know someone who is a mom or if you are a mom, you know the stories and the faces and the names behind all of those statistics. The mom who supported her children through online learning while simultaneously running a nonprofit. I know that mom. The mom who left a job she loves to care for her kids and her aging relative. I know that mom. The grandmother who could only see her pregnant daughter on Zoom, but who packed coolers of food to leave on her doorstep. The mom who made space for adult children to move back home. The mom who pushed new life into the world while wearing a mask. The truth is that mothers are shouldering an increasingly heavy burden. And somehow in the face of it all, they continue to be agents of life, care, and tough love in the universe. I am not a mother, but I know many of them, many of you. I see you, I see what you give of yourself every year, but especially this year. 
And if I do nothing else this morning, my prayer is that I validate you and that I lift you up. I hope that you know that you are tending to the heartbeat of the universe with every hand that you hold, every wound you heal, and every barrier you break. Today is Mother's Day. It's a day for acknowledgement and celebration, but one that's not without pain. We've said this already in our service, but it's a difficult day for so many people. Some have lost a mother and that grief is really present with them today. Some have struggled to become a mother. Some don't have a relationship with their mother. Some have lost children. It's impossible to stand here this morning and not think of Elizabeth, the mother of Adam Toledo, or Katie, the mother of Dante Wright. It's impossible not to think of the mothers of the children who were removed from them at the border into this country or the mothers of India as COVID ravages their people. I pray that God gives them comfort this morning and that God gives you comfort if today is a hard one for you. This is a day in which we're called to hold this complexity knowing that even as we celebrate the mothers and mother figures in our lives, that there are broken systems, broken relationships, and broken bodies that make this day hard. It's a complex day for a complex role. For indeed, mothering is multifaceted. Mothers multitask <laughs> And there are multiple ways to be a mother, biological mothers, adopted mothers, house mothers, grandmothers, mentors and aunts who mother, friends who mother, the earth which mothers us all. Mothering happens in all of these multiple ways, something which is seen in scripture. Come with me for a moment to the book of Romans chapter 16. This is the end of Paul's letter to the church in Rome. And as Paul does in every letter, he's giving some final greetings and closing words. Now I must admit, these verses are very easy and even tempting to gloss over because it's essentially just a really long list of names. But I challenge you to listen closely to what is written. I'm going to read, starting with verse one. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church in Sancrea. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of his people and to give her any help she may need from you. For she has been the benefactor of many people, including me. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meets at their house. Greet my dear friend Epinetus, who was the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Amphiatus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ and my dear friend Stachus. Greet Apelles, whose fidelity in Christ has stood the test. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet those in the household of our Narcissus who are in the Lord. Greet Trithnia and Tryphosa, those women who work very hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Stay with me, I've got one more verse. It's verse 13, greet Rufus 
chosen in the Lord and his mother, who has been a mother to me too. I did my best to give you a dramatic reading, but it is an easy section to tune out. But there are some things worthy of note in there. Did you notice that Paul names multiple women who helped grow the church? Phoebe, Priscilla, Mary, Trifnia, and Tryphosa, Persis. This is a clear indication that women have always been in ministry. And many of these women that Paul names were likely mothers. And I especially want to highlight verse 13. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord and his mother, who has been a mother to me too. While this woman is unnamed, she is clearly important to Paul. And we know more about her than you might think. In the crucifixion narrative in the Gospel of Mark, we are told that during that crucifixion, they compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry Jesus's cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Now, we can't say with 100% certainty that these are the same Rufus, but it's highly likely that the woman who was like a mother to Paul, the woman who was the mother of Paul's friend, was also the wife of the man who carried the cross for Jesus. Now, imagine with me for a moment what this means. It means that this mother was proximate to the crucifixion. Her husband was intimately involved with the final moments of Jesus. This must have influenced her faith, a faith that she would go on to share with her son. Imagine and think about what she must have taught Rufus and how those teachings shaped him into a disciple. And think of what she must have taught Paul. Think of how she, like a mother, must have cared for him, loved him, nurtured him in body, mind, and soul. It's incredible to consider. This mother, unnamed as she is, stands behind the words of the Apostle Paul. She stands behind one of the most influential figures of the Christian faith. What a testament to the power of mothering. She reminds us that mothers have a crucial role to play in the faith lives of the community. Mothers pass on wisdom and tradition. We already named some of the things our mothers have passed on to us. Mothers give us so much from the earliest nursery rhymes to the prayers that they say for their adult children. Mothers carry with them an embodied theology of nurture and collective power. This woman also shows us that there are many ways to mother and to be a mother. I think of the house mothers of ballroom culture. If you're not familiar, these are women and trans women who for decades have taken in queer teenagers and young adults. Mothers who care for those who have been kicked out of their biological families. Their stories are only now being told on larger platforms like the television show Pose, but their mothering has been life-saving, literally life-saving and life-giving. There are so many ways to be a mother, but mothering inevitably involves labor of some sort. Mothering involves labor, labors of love, labors of pain, our scripture from 1 John that Ted read for us reminds us of labor 
telling us that Jesus and those who follow him are born of God. It says that Jesus is the one who came by water and blood. Now, the author of this text is referring to the water of baptism and the blood of crucifixion. And those are critical. But I cannot read this text on Mother's Day without thinking of the water and the blood of childbirth. I've never done that, but I've heard that childbirth is hard and that it's painful and that it's exhausting. It is messy. There's water and there's blood. Many of you know this because you have done it. You've had your water break and you breathed through the contractions and you pushed and pushed and finally held a little life to your chest. Jesus was born in the same way. Sometimes we forget about that. We sing silent night, holy night, but Jesus was born in the way that we all are. He came forth with water and blood and fluids and milk. He came through a mother's labor. You see, God used a womb to bring Christ into the world, which tells us that the mother is a sacred role. A mother labors, bringing forth new life. A mother nurtures, a mother sustains, a mother empowers. All of this can be seen in Mary, the mother of Jesus. We could sing a new version of the old hymn, O Sacred Womb, now open with water and blood, bringing forth, now lovingly surrounding the Savior of the earth. The sacred role of mother applies to so many in scripture, and it applies to God herself. I often remind myself and, and remind all of us that God is greater than our language can fully capture. No one word is enough. Yet we can meditate on different words and different names for God as a way to better understand God. And one of those words is mother. Again, this comes to us in scripture. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. Hosea eleven four, As an eagle stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, as it spreads its wings, takes them up and bears them aloft on its pinions, the Lord alone guided them. Deuteronomy 32, 11. Now I cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. Isaiah 42, 14. God as a mother tends to that heartbeat of the universe. God as mother is present in the messiness of creation in water and blood. She labors to bring about a world that loves and gives justice to all of her children. She labors for balance and harmony among living things. She holds out her hand for comfort and nourishment. On this day, all mothers should see themselves in God and the divine within themselves, and therefore know that the labor is never in vain. For to mother is to take part of this primal, sacred act. And on this day, we have the opportunity to honor all of our mothers, our godly mother, our earth mother, and all of those who have been a mother to us. Let us connect with the knowledge that we are brought forth in water and blood in the very way of Jesus the Christ. And may we cultivate within our deepest selves our own mothering instincts. For this world is in need of nurture and healing and tender love. Amen. <laughs>